The Maple Leafs continued to rack up the wins despite not playing their best hockey as another MLB star suffers an injury at the World Baseball Classic. Hey everyone, welcome into another Sun Sports Roundtable. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and Post Media National Sports columnist Scott Stinson. And gentlemen, the Toronto Maple Leafs are 6-3-1 and in their last 10 games, but have been getting outshot and outchanced in the majority of those games. Steve, is this just an anomaly or is there some big bigger concern with the way the team is currently playing. I don't see it as an anomaly or a concern. Uh, you're playing nothing hockey at this point in time. And so to expect them to be playing something hockey, I think it is asking too much with what 12 games or so to go and no meaning in the standings for where they're, they know who they're playing. And, and here's the thing. If you're Sheldon Keefe, do you want to put your, this is like NFL exhibition games. Do you want to put your quarterback out there and play the best football you're going to play in the preseason? No. you got 10 games. Tampa's going to be watching every one of those games for scouting purposes. I am not. I wouldn't want to show them anything, and I wouldn't want my lineup together unless maybe five games to go or so when they have some injuries and they, and they, and they have some flexibility with how they're going to play. Yeah, I, I agree with Steve, and, I mean, it's been funny to see how this has unfolded. There was all sorts of – uh, consternation about Sheldon Keefe rolling out an 11 and seven lineup with seven defensemen. And was this the right mix? And I mean, I think if he could do nine defensemen and keep his forwards out of injuries way, he would do it. Um, look, the reality is they're, they're going through the motions to an extent here. They're trying to win hockey games to, to maintain some sort of edge. So you're not completely bored in the run up to the playoffs, but we have known, literally for years now that that what matters to this team is what they do in the playoffs and certainly for months it's been obvious that they were going to play the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round um, because of how good Boston is doing and because of you know the rest of the situation in the league so look I it's a bit it's a bit funny that at the same time they sort of added these new traits to their lineup that hasn't really necessarily paid off in better play, even though the results have been there. But I think we all know that that what matters is what happens in round one and in game number one at Scotiabank Arena, and, and we'll see what happens then. Two things I have liked it of late, and I, and I think they are important and will be important come playoff time. One, Austin Matthews looks like he's back playing close to the level that Austin Matthews played last year when he won the Hart Trophy. He's been really impressive lately. To Morgan Riley, who's really had a bad season with the Leafs. And, and terrific guy, just he does not had a good year. He needs to be the Leafs' best defenseman, and he needs to be a game-changing kind of defenseman for them to have success. He's been pretty good lately. So the fact that, that Riley and Matthews have been that good, I think, is a positive for the Maple Leafs. All right, shifting from the ice to the diamond, everyone loves the World Baseball Classic until someone suffers a horrific injury, and we saw Mets closer Edwin Diaz go down in the post-win celebration. And then on Saturday, we saw Astro star Jose Altuve suffer a uh, broken thumb after being hit by a pitch. Clearly, Scott, the players taking part love the WBC, but at the end of the day, is the juice worth the squeeze when it comes to the World Baseball Classic? Yeah, I think, Rob, that you're just you're never going to get away from the possibility of players getting injured playing in this thing. And it's just the cost of doing business. I mean, the Diaz thing was such a weird fluke. It almost doesn't really count as a baseball injury. It's, um, you know, it's, it sort of feels like he could have hurt himself getting out of the car if it was going to be a, a celebration induced injury. And El Tuve could have got hit by a pitch in a spring training game. So I don't think if, if you're coming up with reasons why the world baseball classic is a problem, uh, I don't know that the risk of injury would be the thing I would put at the top of my list. I, I do think there is inherent problems with the timing and the fact that they're sort of doing it in a spring training situation where uh, some players don't bother to go because they want to get ready for the season. And, and it, it just there's no natural place to put something like this in the baseball calendar. But spring training has always felt a bit weird to me. Um, but again, I don't think that the injury reason is necessarily the reason to, to be against it. I, and as you say, Rob, the, the fact that the players seem to really like it, the ones that participate, I think suggests it has some value. We'll begin with one premise. Um, any event that injures Houston Astros players, I am in favor of. So right away, I'm in favor of the WBC. Um, second thing is, Vladdy Guerrero got hurt before the Jays played a game. He didn't go. 
Um, the Dodgers shortstop is lost for the season, base running in a spring training game. Like, like Scott says, um, anybody can get hurt doing anything, uh, you know, whether it's a celebration post game or anything else. If you want to give a, a reason for why the WBC should be played and why it should exist, look at the players. I don't care what team, what country we're talking about. Watch the excitement of the players and the excitement of the crowd. Baseball doesn't bring on that kind of excitement. Baseball players don't get excited about anything. But if you want, I'm talking about teams that didn't, didn't move on. Canada, you look at the kids playing for Canada, how excited they were. You look at the players who played for Israel, didn't win a game. You know, that kind of excitement. There's, there was unbelievable passion from the players in this event. And I think any event that can bring that much passion to baseball has to be kept and has to be run every few years. Yeah, I, I agree, Steve, in that like you can you can sort of say to yourself, well, I don't know, nobody really cares about this thing and nobody's even knows what teams are in and people are surprised to discover that, you know, Marcus Stroman's pitching for Puerto Rico and you're like, Is he what? Like there's, there's, nobody there's, wants there's... Marcus Stroman. Yes, keep changing country. <laughs> so you, you sort of have that skepticism and we're all guilty of it, I'm sure, at times, but then you see those players and how much they care. And the fact that Edu Diaz was hurt was because they were celebrating a game winning uh, victory. So yeah, it's, I, I do think that ultimately you sort of go, well, they clearly love it. They don't get this opportunity very often. So, so you might as well just kind of take the, take the negatives that, that come along with it. One of my favorite stories of all time was an NFL kicker whose name now escapes me, who made a field goal, celebrated and got injured in the celebration right after mm -hmm. making the kick. And that's what reminded yeah. me of the Diaz situation. Indeed. Nobody yeah. banned kicking, by the way, at that point in time. <laughs> yeah, I believe that was uh, not Martin Gramatica, but it was his brother Bill, I believe, Bill Gramatica, Gramatica <laughs> the other Gramatica from back in the day. I Gramatica or that day house. I didn't remember which. <laughs> yeah. Well, as always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below for Steve Simmons and Scott Stinson. I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week on another Sun Sports Roundtable.